Dr. Weed is actually a, an old uh, co-worker. He's actually my boss when I worked for DMH for a short time. And uh, he's a whiz on nutrition and staying healthy and, and eating well. And, and so I said, who do I know that knows this? And of course, I always think of David. And so um, David, uh, um, you'll, you'll love these folks. They're really full of energy. And um, uh, Paula, Sarah, Mary, Cheryl, and Pat. Uh, and you know Ed. Yep. And so, uh, but have a great time. And I'm sure some I, I people are filtering. We had 15 signed up, so okay. so they may filter in a little bit late. Yeah, this fun. is Marlene. And, uh, Marlene, Dr. Weed. Hello. Hi. And so, but I'll let you. Uh, yeah, we run the show. We're here till uh, 1130. 1130. Okay. Yep. And I uh, watch them. Thank you. Thank you. If you need anything, just yell. Oh yeah. Fine. Well, thank you very much, Deb. You're welcome. Um, yeah. And I want to thank you for showing up to a topic that a lot of people aren't necessarily interested in or don't think they need to know anything more about. Um, but I want each of you to not only listen and learn what I have to uh, present this morning, but also uh, to tell other people about it because. Uh, uh, I'm in the process of trying to get information out to large numbers of people because my job uh, as Executive Director of Partners for a Healthier Community in Fall River, but we work really around the region here, uh, is to help lower rates of obesity and diabetes. Those are two big goals of ours. Okay? And as you'll soon learn, uh, the methods we've been using or recommending for the last 30 years not only are not working, they're making things worse, okay? So I'm here to tell you some things that you may not have ever heard anyone say, um, and certainly things that are going to contradict what other people are likely to tell you, including doctors and dietitians and other public health people, okay? So hang on to your seats. <laughs> We're going for a ride here, okay? Um, a whole set of information. Um, let me uh, first start, if I can get the slides moving, there we go, um, by saying that I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a clinical psychologist, and even if I were a medical doctor, I wouldn't be here to advise you on your own medical care and treatment. That's up to you and your physician, okay? Uh, so if you learn some things today and want to try them, uh, particularly if you're on medication for either diabetes or high blood pressure, you need to talk with your physician, okay? Because some of the things that I'm going to recommend that you do, and recommend that anyone do, uh, may mean that you don't need your medication, or may not need as much of your medication. And in particular, if you're on insulin and you go on a low carbohydrate diet, you may find that you're having problems because you're taking too much insulin, okay? So, just remember that. Everybody got that clear? Consult with your doctor, okay? So, this is what we've all been told. Fat and cholesterol will lead to heart disease, so eat as little fat as possible, right? You've heard that message, just that's a lot of nods, so you've heard that. Uh, secondly, you can only lose weight by reducing calories, uh, or increasing exercise, or both. Okay, and we'll talk about calorie balance and things like that. And then thirdly, if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, I, I was pre-diabetic. I was almost diabetic. You got the pre. Pre, okay. So, and we'll talk about that condition. Yeah. Uh, you were told to cut out fats and exercise more, okay, as a way to deal with your diabetes, all right? Okay, fair enough. Well, those three things are wrong. <laughs> Okay, yeah. uh, I'm going to explain why, okay. Yeah. Oops. When we follow the advice we've been given for all those years, no matter what we do, we're always hungry, okay. And this happens all the time. I know, I, I was on low-fat diets for years, okay. Cut the fat, don't worry about the carbs, cut the fat, cut the fat, and you'll be fine. Well, you have to limit your calories then. So, we'll talk about what happens when you limit your calories. 
But when you start choosing foods that are low in fat, first of all, they taste terrible. Uh, anybody here ever eat unsweetened plain yogurt? Okay, what's it like? Horrible. Horrible, thank you. <laughs> Sour, okay. Some people can eat it, but it takes some getting used to, right? I don't know if anybody continues to eat it? Right. Well, when Americans discovered that yogurt was good for us, the Europeans have known this for years, um, we started eating it, but we hated how it tasted. So to cure that, we took the fat out and added sugar, okay? So typically when you get a package of yogurt, you end up with a big layer of jelly at the bottom that you're supposed to stir in and things of that sort to make it palatable. Well, the first reason it tastes terrible is they took the fat out. Fat helps things taste good. And then secondly, uh, because yogurt is naturally unsweetened, there's some sugar from the milk that goes in it, but if we use low-fat milk, uh, we're not getting any flavor. And now we add sugar. So how many grams of carbohydrates are in one of those little yogurt cups? Anybody ever looked? It depends, like 12 grams to like 12 to 28, some in the low 30s, okay? It's like eating a candy bar, okay? Not particularly good. There's nothing good about the sugar in it. And you've taken the fat out of it, so you're not getting fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin D. So you end up with a little pudding of sugar and water. You know, it's not particularly nutritious, right? Um, we've also been told that we lose weight by starving. Okay, that is to say calorie restriction. Okay, the typical low-fat, low-calorie diet is one that you might have a limit of maybe 1,800 calories. Well, if you're used to 23, 25, most men 2,600, and you're eating 18, what happens when you don't get enough calories? How do you feel? Tired. 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 Yeah. yeah. Right. In fact, your yeah. metabolism begins to slow down to compensate, which is why people will have some initial weight loss, but then they plateau, okay? In part because our bodies are fighting that uh, reduction of calories. And one way that our bodies do that is by lowering our metabolism. That means we don't keep our body as warm, so we may feel cold, okay? And because we're not ex expending uh, energy like that, we, we feel tired and kind of worn out, if you will, okay? Uh, it's not like we fall asleep, but we just don't feel right. And the third big thing is we feel hungry. How many people like to go hungry for hours, days, or weeks? Anybody here? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Okay, <laughs> probably means we don't have anybody who's anorexic here. Okay, but the, the point being that hunger is a very powerful motivating factor. Okay, uh, when we're hungry, we'll do almost anything to get that feeling to go away. Well, sure enough, that's exactly what we do. So as soon as the diet's over, we lost five pounds, we met our goal, oh, I'm so relieved, I'm off my diet. Boom, how long does it take before those five pounds are back? <laughs> Maybe five days, depending on what you're eating, okay? Five pounds and more. Yeah, right, exactly. We often end up putting more, and that's called yo-yo dieting, where you go down, then you go up more, and then you go down, you go up even more, uh, that kind of process is rarely successful in the I want to ask you a question. Sure. Um, as we age, after a certain age, we start losing like five pounds, ten, no, we well, do start losing weight. In your 80s, age. yeah. Advanced age. Without even dieting. Right, yeah. yeah. Now there is, there is weight loss in advanced ages because of muscle mass loss. Right. Okay, but not necessarily fat loss. Uh, so, um, and if you look around, you'll notice that a lot of people in their 80s are carrying extra weight. So it's not the rule that everybody, as they age, loses large amounts of weight. Well, I've watched my mother lose weight for a Yes. Of okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you will see that. Especially she's 95. But right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but up until, uh, while your metabolism is still working well, you're going to gain weight if you're eating foods that make you gain weight. We'll talk about what those are. 
And blood sugar levels are rarely good on low-fat diets because you're eating excessive sugars and carbs. So you're always having those troubles. So um, that's what happens. How many people are familiar with the United States dietary uh, guidelines? Uh, we all are because we all, in one way or another, we're affected by them. Okay? The USDA has a dietary advisory committee that meets every five years and issues recommendations about what Americans should be eating. And uh, typically they say avoid fatty meats. In fact, they say avoid fat in all its forms. Okay, get fat out of the diet. So I'll tell you something about that. They, now, in the last 10 years, they've recommended getting exercise, and I'm all for that. There's nothing about what I'm saying that says that exercise is bad for you. On the other hand, exercise is not a great strategy for weight loss. Okay, there's a lot of research on that. Yes, people who work out and lose some water weight and things of that sort will lose a few pounds, but over the long run, exercise alone will not keep weight off, okay? You have to make dietary changes. You can do that in conjunction with exercise and you'll do better. But if you simply say, I can sweat it off, and I know we have a fitness challenge going on right now, you have one in New Bedford now, uh, but uh, I see dozens of people come every Saturday morning, they're 20, 40, 60 pounds overweight, and they're convinced that all they have to do is just sweat for an hour and the weight will fall off. And it doesn't, okay? If anything, many of them end up gaining a few pounds because when you exercise, what does that, what happens when you exercise? And anybody ever said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go for a walk and work up a good appetite, okay? Well, that's exactly what, you get calorie deficit. You get hungry, okay? So exercising, you know, a lot of people will work out for an hour and then go home and say, Oh, I worked out for an hour. I'm going to have a dish of ice cream to reward yeah, myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then they wonder why they're not losing weight. Yeah. Do you feel the older you get, the less exercise you can do? Because I used to do a lot of exercise. Oh, sure. Exercise, and yeah. now I'm lucky. There are limits, right? Yeah. But you really want to think about doing the kind of exercise up to your limit, whatever that is, and do it on a regular basis. It's more important that you move in some fashion than you sit. Okay? I do move. Right. And even if that means getting up, you know, for five, ten minutes every half hour, so you're not just sitting for two, three, four, five hours, like many Americans do, okay? Some movement helps. All movement helps. And going for a walk around the block is better than sitting in a chair. You know, those kinds of things. What about so, climbing stairs? Climbing stairs is excellent. Yeah. I know, I do it four times a day. Excellent, right. It, and it's, it's good. 15, 15. Well, I could do a whole other talk about exercise, but what, what, yes, no, what's, what we're learning now is that short interval, high intensity exercise is actually as good as long interval, lower intensity exercise. So a brief burst of even two minutes has measurable effects on your cardiovascular health. Okay? So that's exercise. And then eat your veggies. Do you think I'm for eating veggies or not? Absolutely, okay? Nothing wrong with vegetables. We're gonna talk particularly about vegetables that grow above the ground, okay? But vegetables are an important source of vitamins and minerals, okay? However, you can do without vegetables altogether if you're living your life north of the Arctic Circle. Anybody know who lives north of the Arctic Circle? Eskimos. Eskimos, Inuit, okay? Uh, native populations who've been there for eons, okay? Tens of thousands of years, okay? Do they grow vegetables north of the Arctic Circle? Of course not. You can't even get a shovel in the ground, okay? Do they have poor health? No. No, absolutely not. Very low cholesterol, very low heart disease, almost no heart disease, no cancer. The things they die of are injuries and infectious diseases, okay? but they're very healthy folks and they eat no vegetables. How do they do that? They eat all fat. Thank you. They get their vitamins from a place that we've stopped getting our vitamins from in America. How many people eat liver once a week? Good for you. Excellent. I don't do it once a week, but I eat it a lot. Okay. We've, why did we stop eating liver? Because they thought it was too fatty. They thought it was too fatty and too much cholesterol. And right. We'll talk about cholesterol in a minute. Yeah. The, if you want to get the most vitamins out of any food, eat liver. Take a look at the nutrition charts. Far and away, more vitamins and, and some minerals 
in uh, any animal liver than you're ever going to get by eating vegetables all day long. Okay? So vegetables, I say, are kind of a poor source of vitamins compared with what you can get from liver. Okay? So that's something to kind of factor in there. But I'm not going to argue that vegetables are bad for you, they're not. I got a good recipe from England for that. Oh, good. I'll share that afterwards with you. Thank you. Okay. Fat and cholesterol are not bad for us. That's what the current research is showing. And remember I mentioned the USDA guidelines? Those are the guidelines that govern food that's in hospitals, schools, military, okay? About a quarter of Americans are eating a meal that the U.S. dietary guidelines have required, okay? Uh, so it's very difficult to get away from those guidelines, all right? And I'd love to have them change tomorrow, but we're trying. Um, but they dropped the limit on total dietary fat back a year ago in January. Um, did they tell anybody? No, it's just not there. Why did they drop it? Because the research doesn't support it. But they didn't tell anybody. And they still say, choose lean meats, choose low-fat dairy, etc. Okay. They also dropped limits on dietary cholesterol. That was about two years ago. Anybody see that in the paper? No. Just one article. If you didn't read the paper that day, you missed it, and that's it. And they don't continue to say anything about it. So people continue to be convinced that dietary cholesterol is bad for you. Where does most of the cholesterol in bodies come from? Us. Yes, right. We make it. That's what our liver does. 70 to 80 percent of the cholesterol in our bodies we manufacture. Why do we manufacture it? We need it. We need it. It's an essential component of our, our of bodies. Our cell walls are made up. Uh, repairing cellular damage requires cholesterol. Uh, some hormones require cholesterol. We have to have cholesterol. So if we cut back on the amount of cholesterol that we're eating, we just make more. Okay? Right. So if you're cutting back on cholesterol and eating, you know, egg white sandwiches and, you know, no yolks and all that kind of stuff, forget about it. Okay. There's one exception, and that's there are a small percentage of people who have a familiar hypercholesterolemia, which is an illness, okay, uh, genetically uh, predisposed, and those folks are um, having very high levels of cholesterol, 300-400, and it's probably not a good idea for them to add more cholesterol through their diet, but other than that, not a problem. Should we, should we be taking statins then? Well, I, I'll do a no. whole hour on statins, but no. listen to the lady next to you. No, no. <laughs> I, we have I some talk, things to talk I'm about. I'm a nurse, and I talk. There I have you ten go. people, and I told them all. Right. Right. The, the only evidence for yeah. the use of statins yeah. are oh, yeah. men yeah. under the age of 70 who've had a previous heart attack. Okay? That's a very small percentage of people who are prescribed statins today. And it's... It's, if you agree with me, I agree. it's ridiculous. I don't okay. even take it. The doctors try right. to talk you into it, but I don't take it. Right, and so you don't have muscle pain and all <laughs> yes. kinds of things, and we'll probably find out in 10 years what all the other things are that are happening. But, and there's some reasons why it works, but it has nothing to do with cholesterol. It has to do with inflammation control. So, in any case, another time, all right? Uh, so, fat cholesterol are not bad for us. That's the research supports. Um, and more in particular, we'll talk about that, that uh, the research is quite clear that there is no association between fats, including saturated fats, and heart disease, okay? Okay, uh, and that was first demonstrated by Walter Willett in the National Nurses Study, where they thought, we'll take a look at 100,000 nurses who fill out detailed uh, forms every year, uh, we'll see that those who ate the most fat had the most heart disease. Wrong. Not one bit of evidence for that. That we knew 15, 17 years ago. Okay, have you heard about that? No. Nobody's telling you that. Okay. So fat is not the problem. And cardiologists, uh, anybody know Dr. Mike Rocha from over here in Bedford? He's a cardiologist, works at uh, the, the uh, Hawthorne Medical. Okay, if you don't know him, you should get to know him. He's a terrific guy. And he does a lot of stuff to prevent illness using 
uh, dietary changes, but also exercise and meditation and other kinds of things. Okay, terrific guy. But he's a he's a board certified cardiologist, and he'll tell you in a heartbeat. In fact, if you go listen to that video that's in that on the brochure, the fed up video, you listen to that online. That it's on the bottom of the front page there. Um, he's he appears in that, and he says, you know. Heart disease is not related to fat. In fact, we should be eating more fat. He recommends the Mediterranean diet. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lots of olive oil, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's been shown to reduce levels of heart disease, okay? Fat reduces heart disease. Get that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. wow. See, I told you I was going to tell you things you never heard before, okay? That's heresy. And, and, <laughs> pardon me? That's heresy. That's heresy. For too many years we've been told that that yeah. answer isn't true. Absolutely. Right. And then I can give you, there's a wonderful book uh, by Nina Teichholz. Uh, I'll give you the reference a little later called A Big Fat Surprise. Okay, go to the library. You can check it out. It's a wonderful read. It's like a detective story. And Nina goes back through the last 40 years of research on heart disease and fats and tells you why we had came to believe that fat was causing heart disease, even though it was erroneous from the beginning. Okay, the Framingham Heart Study never said that that was the problem. On and on and on. Okay, yeah, I could do another hour on heart disease and how we got to where we are. Okay, but Nina does a super job there. Um, moving on, people feel fuller, longer. Uh, when you have fat. Um, if you have whole milk, anybody drink whole milk? Good for you. I do. Okay. If you were to drink skim milk, would you gain weight or lose weight? Gain. You gain weight, absolutely. We call low fat or skim milk white soda. It's nothing but sugar and water. Okay. Even the vitamin D that we have to put back in artificially, because we took it out when we pasteurized and homogenized the milk, the vitamin D goes right through you too. You can't use a bit of it. It's fat soluble. Hello, you take the fat out, you put the vitamin D in, you don't get any vitamin D. <laughs> okay. We do that to our school children. Okay. The school lunch program, all low fat milk. It tastes terrible, so what do we do so the kids will drink it? What do we do? Um, syrup and syrup. Well, we, we put six grams of sugar and then chocolate flavoring into each one of those little things. That's chocolate soda, <laughs> okay? And they don't get the vitamin D because they don't have any fat in it, okay? Did we do research on that before we decided to limit uh, low-fat milk in, in, or provide low-fat milk in schools? No, not one research study. All the research was done on older white men, okay? Made no sense at all. We applied it to children. And now we've done, there's I think about six studies that have shown that when children, when you compare children drinking full fat milk to low fat or no fat milk, the ones who gain weight are the ones drinking low fat or no fat milk. The ones who don't gain weight are the ones drinking whole fat milk. Why? Because you get satiety with fat. Fat makes you feel full. So instead of having kids drink this low-fat junk <laughs> in the schools, which then stimulates their insulin levels and then get hungry sooner, okay, and then they go home, and because they can't have things with fat in them, what do they eat? Cookies, cake, chips, what have you, okay? Thereby fueling this. And I'll talk to you in a little bit about a guy who worked with overweight adolescent children and discovered that they were gaining weight on these low-fat, calorie-restricted diets that the doctors were recommending. There's a whole movie, it's called Fed Up. You can get it on YouTube now for free. You used to have to get it on Netflix, but if you just Google Fed Up, okay, there's a movie done by Katie Quirk, you know her from uh, ABC television, and they followed uh, three groups of adolescents uh, who were trying to lose weight because they were severely overweight, diabetic, some had fatty liver disease, okay, and they put them on these calorie-restricted, low-fat diets, and they gained weight, okay, and they hated it. They went off the diets. They were smart, okay, 
Yeah, but this is some of the same stuff that Dr. Atkins knew many years ago. That's right. They thought he was crazy. Right. And the only problem, the two problems with Dr. Atkins, he had the right idea. He didn't fully understand everything. And I'm not here to advocate for 12 ounce porterhouse steaks, right. okay, with butter and sour cream on them, okay. Uh, but that was a way to increase your fats, okay. Um, He's, they've since modified that considerably. The New Atkins for a New You is a book that has Atkins-style kinds of stuff, high-fat diets, which is important, but also lots of vegetables and, and other things. So it's a much more balanced approach in that regard. Uh, getting back to the milk subject, um, what do you think about lactose-free milk? Hang on just a second. Let me finish on uh, Dr. Atkins. The, the second mistake was he was the only one promoting it. Yes. He had no allies. Right and the medical community pounced on him because he came out in the early 90s when everybody was really getting on board with the low fat, cut the fat, all that kind of stuff. And they crucified him. They gave him no chance whatsoever. Okay, uh, Lactose free, if you're lactose intolerant for uh, dairy products, sure. You know, uh, about a quarter of the population that? is. Pardon me? How do you know that? How do I know? How, no, not you. How, how does would the person, one know? How would one know? You have digest, digestion problems when you have. Yeah, uh, I got yeah. it. Yeah. I got it. Right. I got it. So well, it. yeah, and if you do, and and that's that actually came about uh, uh, because the human species didn't start uh, drinking milk from animals uh, until about four or five thousand years ago when we herded animals and things of that sort. Uh, some populations developed tolerance to cow's milk or sheep milk or goat milk or whatever. Some did not, and we don't know whether that some had ex more exposure than others or, or what have you, but if you simply inherited the lactose intolerant gene, there's nothing you can change about that. You just have to avoid it, okay? Um, so, most people think that you get fat from eating fat, is that right? Do you put on fat because you eat fat? No, we have fat cells. Yeah, you have fat cells. We have fat cells. How do those fat cells... Women have more fat cells than men. That's why men can lose weight. That's right. And women That's have right. a harder time because we have more fat cells than men. And, and women have more fat cells as a protective device. Right. If you want one, males or females to survive longer, who do we need to survive longer? The women. The women. The men only have to survive till nine right. months before you know, the birth. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, it doesn't take men long and they can die off, no big deal. But you've got to raise a child, you know, so you've got at least 10, 12 years before that child can survive on their own. You've got to be alive. And we, you know, we are so blessed to have no starvation in our society for the most part, okay? But go back 10, 20, 50,000 years ago, people were in starvation mode frequently, okay? Uh, and Women had to have extra fat in order to get through those periods of starvation. So uh, you can you can thank your ancestors, <laughs> okay? But that's why you have more fat. Uh, but the the fat we eat is not does not become the fat you wear, okay? The fat you wear comes from eating what? Sugar. 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 Carbohydrates. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's carbohydrates that our body first uses for energy. So if we've eaten fat, it first goes to the carbs, okay, the glucose in our bloodstream. And if we don't immediately use that glucose in our bloodstream to keep our body warm, keep our metabolism going, or for exercise, okay, the body cannot excre excrete that glucose. We have no way of getting rid of it. Okay, we wish we could. It'll, turn a switch and out goes the, the, the sugar, okay? Um, so the only thing the body can do is to park that into our fat cells. That happens when we eat anything with carbohydrates in it and it stimulates our pancreas to produce insulin. Insulin is a hormone, we don't, it's very tiny quantities, but those quantities then take glucose out of the bloodstream and put it into fat cells. That's its job. What happens if we leave our sugar levels in our blood running high for long periods of time? Diabetes. Diabetes, that's what it's called. And furthermore, if those rates stay high for many years, we can end up with 
retinopathy, you know, blindness, kidney failure, and nerve damage, uh, often resulting in amputation. Okay, not a pretty disease. All right, that's because we can't get the sugar out of our blood. Well, there's one thing you can do to keep sugar from going into your bloodstream. What's that? Not eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's pretty simple when it right comes down to it, okay? If you don't put things in your mouth that have sugar or carbohydrates, okay, and we'll talk about what those are, okay, then you don't stimulate your insulin to park that glucose into your fat cells. So therefore, what happens? You start burning your own body fat. That's called weight loss. That's what everybody's going for. How do I lose weight? Without going hungry, that's the course I teach. You do that by increasing your fats, which don't stimulate insulin, and decrease your carbohydrates that do, okay? And your body will respond very nicely, thank you very much, okay? So once you kind of get the principle down, the rest is just biology. It'll take care of itself. So cutting carbs forces your body to burn its own fat. Okay, plain and simple. And it's easier to stay at a low carb diet because fat gives you satiety. You feel full. It takes about six to eight hours for fats to digest. It takes two to three for carbs. Okay, so when I have my eggs and sausage, no toast, no sugar in my coffee in the morning, I'm not hungry till one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. And how does um, artificial sweetness? Into all well, I could do a whole other... I know that they're yeah. not really good for you, but... Well, you, you want to avoid them. I try to use them very little. Uh, something like stevia, uh -huh. you know, I'll pass this around. You want to take a pack to remind yourself. I think it's one of the better ones. No particular brand, but it's a, it's a plant. And uh, uh, it's very sweet, and you can use it in baking and things of that sort if you want to do that. Um, but in general, once... What's very interesting is once you get off of carbs, for the most part, you can't ever eliminate yeah. them, but I'm down to about 20 a day, okay? Most Americans eat about 300 a day, okay? Um, once you're off of that, you no longer have a, a desire to have sweet things. And you won't believe it until you do it. It's happening now with people who have bariatric surgery, who have their stomachs removed, okay? that they report within days after that surgery, not weeks or months, days, they suddenly no longer have a desire to eat carbohydrates. It's very strange, and the doctors are trying to figure out, it's a brain change. They didn't decide that, they just suddenly don't like it anymore, okay? Well, the same thing happens when you go on a very low carb diet. Once you get those carbohydrates and the sugars and all the glycogen that your liver's been storing out of your system, it takes four or five days for most people, then you no longer have those cravings. And I tell people, I swear to God, I haven't had a brownie, a, a cookie, a dish of ice cream, yeah. whatever, in eight years. And I don't miss it. Wow. Okay? That's, see, that's what people don't understand. They say, oh, you must be so disciplined. I say, no. Frankly, that stuff isn't interesting to me. <laughs> okay? And when you make this change, you will see that that happens, okay? It's bizarre, but it works, okay? Yeah. Fat fish, yeah. especially yeah. things fat like fish, salmon. salmon, fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, tuna, all right. those fatty fishes, yeah. because, yeah. and I could yeah. do a whole other yes, hour yeah. on, on the, the difference yeah. between, but that's what you need. it's the difference yeah. between omega-3 and omega-6 oils, okay? You need a lot more omega-3s than we typically get. Right. You need a lot fewer omega-6s, because that's all we get. Okay? Right. And I'll do a whole thing on oils at some point, if you want me to come back. Yep. Where do we eat omega-6? Where do we find that? Fatty fish, for one. Yeah, salmon. Yeah, salmon, salmon stuff like that. Yeah. Flaxseed, is omega-3s. You're saying we don't need six, we need three. We need more, much more three and much less six. Three. Yeah, we need some of both. And where yeah. do we find three? Three in fatty fish. Okay. Okay. Fish and flaxseed, and yeah, there's a few other sources. So, yeah. yeah. But fish is the easiest source to get. Yeah. And yeah. people complain, you know, it's it's expensive to buy fish. No, it is. Get tuna at eighty nine cents a can. Come on. 
Yeah, it's not that hard to get some. Well, even fresh fish, if you buy a pound, it might be seven ninety eight. You cut it in half, that's only three fifty for a right. meal. Yeah. I mean, you can't do it any cheaper than that. I don't think so. Beef, I mean. beef, beef will be as expensive, right? Yeah, these days. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've got about twenty minutes here. Calories in, calories out doesn't take account of how our bodies work. We've been told that we have to keep our calories in balance with our activity. Who tells us that? They. Who? They. They. But Who there's a they? company that tells us that. There's a company that hired a bunch of researchers and paid them so they would tell us that. See, that's see. It's a company that sells a sugar-sweetened beverage all over the world in red cans and bottles. So oh, what is, oh, that's, yeah, is that a Coca-Cola? Right. Coca-Cola yeah. has a huge advertising campaign on energy balance, all right? And their whole campaign is based on the idea that you can have Coca-Cola in your diet as long as you balance it with some exercise, right? It can be part of a healthy diet. And besides, all calories are the same. You know, the calories in a big container of broccoli are the same as the calories in that little can of Coke. It's all the same. It's just energy, right? Wrong. Okay. Our bodies are not thermodynamic machines. Our bodies are hormonal machines. The different types of food that we eat get handled very differently. I just explained. When we have carbohydrates, we have insulin that turns to that puts body fat on. We can eat fat, and the fat we don't need, we lose, okay? Those are two different sources of calories, but our body responds very differently to those. So people sometimes ask about protein. Do you need more protein? That was part of Atkins' problem, that he recommended far too much protein. You don't need any more protein on this fat. About four to six ounces a day, yeah. you know, standard protein. It's not hard to get. If you get a whole lot more protein, your body will convert to carbohydrates. So, you know, these high protein diets, <laughs> doesn't work. Okay. Diabetes develops essentially because of what you, what you said earlier, which is a genetic predisposition. How many people have heard of people who are on gluten free diets? It's a big range. Yeah, that's right. Okay, right. Well, there, there is a bona fide disease, that, but a very small percentage of people actually have it where people are insensitive to gluten. It's a component of uh, wheat flour. It's the, the gluey right. stuff right. that right. keeps yeah. it together. That, that makes French bread possible. Okay. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, and so, uh, so people go around, you know, buying all this gluten-free products. Now there are whole aisles in the stores gluten-free. Right. Yeah. Okay. Of course, Coca-Cola is gluten-free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Fish and meat are gluten. Well, you know. Vegetables are gluten-free. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, <laughs> they have signs on it saying. I know. It's it's just yeah. crazy. Well, it tells you what the food manufacturers are, well, are into. Do you argue with your doctor when he puts you on medication? Yes. Yes. Do you? Yes. You challenge um, it. Yes. You challenge about the right. medication. Bring some oh. articles in, some of the stuff. Uh, talk yeah. to other people. Yeah. Um, you know. There's one I know. that I wanted that I told him I didn't want to take it. Me. Yeah. He said try it for 30 days. Okay. Well, you want somebody who will work with you. That's and the way I say it is, look, Doc, I'm planning to do this. You measure the results and tell me how I'm doing. So when I have people go on, you know, uh, low carbohydrate, high fat diets, they do that, and their cholesterol numbers drop, their blood pressure comes down, their weight comes down. And then I say, you go back to the doctor in 30 or 60 days. You say, so doc, how am I doing? And the doctor looks at it and says, you're doing great. What are you doing? Right. And you say, well, I want to keep it up. Okay. And that's that's the whole point. You want to look at results, not advice. I hate to say it, but okay. I did it. I did it for 30 days. Went back to the doctors, and everything went up. I yeah. Tried to say, uh, well, the and then my uh, calcium was at the lowest level. Right. See, and that and I'm not getting it. Yeah. So that creates other Right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not getting the vitamin D that you need. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. what's in here. Whatever you do, you don't win. I think it's right. a So yeah. don't look at ad advice, look at results. Okay? Yeah. And your body will tell you when you're getting healthy. Okay? 
Um, so, um, chronically high blood sugar over time results in damage to the heart. We already went over that. Let me finish these up if I can here. On the gluten-free um, idea, um, some people have celiac disease, but lots of people think Most people healthy. don't have yeah, celiac lots disease. lots of people think they feel bad. <laughs> well, they do, I think, in large measure, because they really cut the amount of carbohydrates they're eating. Okay. 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 Uh, and they don't understand that that's what's going on. I'm not against that, but, but nobody argues with somebody who says, I have celiac disease and I can't eat gluten, okay? But you tell somebody, I have prediabetes and I can't have carbohydrates and think you're a little crazy. You know, where'd you hear that? And who's advising you? And one thing or another. Why carbohydrates are seen, there are three essential nutrients. You want to name them? Three things you have to have. No, three things. Three major nutrients, okay? Uh, carbohydrates, fats, protein. and protein. Right. Mm -hmm. Which of those three do you have to have? Protein. Protein, definitely. You don't make protein, you have to eat it. Yeah, yeah. What else? Fat. 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 You right. have to have fat, fat or you will die. That's okay? Right. Need Plain need and simple. Cells. But yeah. I say that there are some carbohydrates that are good. Yeah. Because I think beans have some carbohydrates, but it beans, also, beans fair amount, yeah. you know. Yeah, but they, they, they have the vitamins and minerals. And for instance, if you're a vegetarian right. and you're not going to eat meat, right. and you right. need your B vitamins right. in particular, you're going to be eating some beans. Right. Okay. You can do low carb on a vegan or vegetarian right. diet. You just have to be a lot more careful right. about what you're eating. Right. And I'm not saying that beans should be off your right. plate. I'm just saying, they count right. as carbs. Yes. They're not very high in yes. them, but they still count. They have but the last nutrient, okay, carbohydrates, is not essential. Mm. Remember the Inuit we talked about. Yeah. You can live forever without any carbohydrates. Oh, so I can make okay. it in September to my summer? <laughs> That's it. You will make it. I well, guarantee you. Don't okay. eat any carbohydrates. <laughs> so if you don't have diabetes yet, eat as if you did to prevent it. If you do have diabetes, stop eating the foods that made you sick. Yeah, simple. That is it. It is simple. Okay. Um, so, in general, if you want to lose weight or keep your blood sugar down or stop your insulin resistance, whether you have diabetes or not, reduce your carbohydrate intake, especially refined grains and sugars. That gets back to the whole grains. Refined grains are, you know, the, the bread, the tip top wonder bread, all those yeah. things, you know. That stuff, the flour is so pulverized okay. into little tiny particles. It's essentially sugar. Yes. What about Good Pepperidge Farm? My mother yeah. had that 50, 1950. Sure. That was a good bread. Yeah. I still Can you it. still get it? I only try to eat it once twice. Yeah. Though, yeah, if you want, if you're going to yeah. eat bread, you have to eat bread. Clearly, go for as <laughs> a high, bread. yeah, a better bread. Okay. Yeah. But remember, one slice of bread is 15, 16 carbs. I eat 20 a day. So I have a sandwich, I'm way over, okay? What I do eat are, you can get low carb uh, wraps. Uh, Joseph's makes one, there's several others around. Uh, so I can have a, a sandwich, I have one in my lunch bag out in the car there. It's just four grams of carbohydrates for a wrap, okay? Rather than 20. So you stay on 20 carbs all the time and you're fine. But I'm fine. I eat much more than that. If I have two pieces of toast in the morning, my blood sugar will be 200 by noon. Okay, so, so you, you know, I'm carbohydrate intolerant, all right? So oh, I eat accordingly. Yeah. Carbohydrate intolerant. <laughs> right. Okay, so here's the cartoon. The high carb diet I put you on 20 years ago gave you diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Oops. Did doctors say oops? Uh, not usually. Not usually. Right. Uh, and the difficulty is I, I, have, I do a group on Saturday mornings and I... Uh, I have a guy in there who went on low carb, got great results, um, told his doctor what he was doing. His doctor was horrified, said, you can't do that. I said, so you mean to tell me that everything your doctor knows and measures, you're improving, but he's telling you to stop. And I said, there's only two reasons for that. One, your doctor wants you to be sick. And there's some people cynically would argue that there are, no, there are physicians who want you to be sick because they have customers. Okay? That's a very cynical view, and I don't think most doctors are like that. But, and the other is, I said, how old is he? He says he's 80 years old. I said, well, that tells you 
That's, he went to medical school at least 30 years ago, and what he learned was cut yeah. the fat and keep eating the carbs. So take your advice accordingly. Okay. Let's, uh, I've got a, I'm done here. Um, so I offer a weekly group um, at, on Saturday mornings. If you want to come over to Fall River, it's free. Just walk in 10 o'clock at Cuss Middle School. Um, if you don't want to go all the way over there, if you go to this website, gfrpartners.com, low carbs, send some of the, send the, uh, the fed up uh, brochure there. Um, I've got all of my, that's why I videotape everything. Everything I do is on video, it's there, and you can listen to it all. I, uh, the 10 week course is, you know, we, next week we're going to talk about grains, and we'll talk about fats, and, we'll, you know, and uh, we're going to do Super Bowl foods. And the, you know, most people kind of get the concept and they understand that it works. The difficult part is to persuade people to eat more fat because we're right. so fat phobic. Yes. And quite frankly, it's not easy to get fat. Okay. I was at a unnamed hospital last night for dinner and I tried to get a meal that didn't have carbs and that had fat in it. And I couldn't find it. I had to go get extra butter to put on my <laughs> veggies to increase the fats. But, you just but, but the meal the meal offerings were like 35, 62, 55 carbohydrates per serving. Okay? And I'm thinking if I were cynical that the hospital oh, I'm sorry. That the hospital is trying to make their patients sick by the food they serve. You know? I mean just crazy, crazy stuff. So you can get more of me later, okay? I'm going to stop now. There are all kinds of people coming in. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're